Hello. My name is Thomas McCurdy, and this is Bailey Hale. Together, we own and run Ardelia Farm and Company up in Irisburg, Vermont, in the Northeast Kingdom, about two hours away. And uh, we were asked here today not because we are social media experts or PR experts or professional photographers, but we uh, have found a way to make social media work for us and have had a, a great couple of years on our farm and, and grown quite a bit as a direct result of our social media presence. So I think uh, much of what we'll touch on really echoes what um, Alex and Taylor said, but uh, much more anecdotal. And we can show you exactly how we used those principles and applied it to our farm and uh, made it work. So we'll start by briefly telling you about our story, how we got into farming and found our way to Vermont. And uh, after that, we'll outline sort of the, um, our approach to social media, specifically Instagram, and the rules that we've kind of created for ourselves to follow on a daily basis. So uh, we met uh, in living in Philadelphia a little over five years ago. And um, Bailey in the backyard and little side area uh, next to his row home in the center of Philadelphia had a little chicken coop with a handful of birds and uh, he also had a beautiful garden of raised beds and he kept bees and uh, I thought he was crazy when we met he uh, he said oh yeah my goal within the next few years is to to be a farmer to get out of town and start farming and uh, I didn't get it at all. I grew up in rural North Dakota where farming is everywhere but uh, where, I, where I grew up uh, it's something that you're born into and you don't just become a farmer, how does that even work? But uh, it didn't take more than a few weeks of helping with the chicken chores and uh, harvesting from the raised beds before I was 100% on board and uh, we shared the dream. So that's maybe a couple months after we met, I was right there. <laughs> so. We, um, together we grew increasingly just saddened by the direction that food was headed in this country and uh, we wanted to do something more. We did our little part in the city but uh, shopping at Whole Foods and being preachy about it just wasn't enough. We wanted to, uh, to really practice what we were preaching and so we decided maybe five or ten years we'll get out of town, find some land and start farming. But, uh, I think nine months after we met, I had a bad day at work and texted Bailey and said, you know what, let's just get out of here. Let's just, let's escape. And he said, don't say it if you don't mean it. And I said, I mean it. <laughs> so within a couple of weeks, we uh, went on Craigslist and found uh, a little apartment above some guy's shed in central New York in the uh, Cobleskill, uh, Schoharie County area. And um, he was willing to rent us a couple of acres and a place to stay. And so we left our careers, sold the house, and loaded up a U-Haul. Uh, we were in New York for two and a half years on two different rental farms, very different from one another, where we were able to make a lot of mistakes and try a lot of things. We got goats and sheep, uh, raised meat rabbits, got our first pigs, and our gardens grew quite a bit. Our business plan was very fluid. We thought we'd maybe had the direction of commercial goat dairy. We liked the idea of doing sheep at a larger scale, or even uh, pork at a commercial level. So we didn't know exactly what we wanted to do, but we knew we wanted to do it, and this was the right life for us. So after two and a half years in New York, we knew it was time to buy, and uh, we looked far and wide throughout New England, and all signs were pointing to the Northeast Kingdom. We fell in love with uh, kind of a, a rickety 50-acre spot, and uh, we could afford it, and it was two years ago next month we moved up here, and about our little farm. Okay, so it was that time we, uh, we allowed ourselves to make mistakes on our rental properties in New York, but once we bought a place in Vermont, we, it was time to make things happen. So we really had to start thinking of this as a business, not as a very, very expensive hobby. Um, so we really wanted to, we needed a new name. We kind of tried out a couple different names, which we sort of liked but we wanted to really think about who we were selling to. So we knew that uh, we would be selling flowers eventually. My background was as a floral designer in Philadelphia. Thomas was a pastry chef. We knew we wanted to incorporate that into our business. Um, so we just want to think who, who buys at farmer's markets the most? Who's most likely to come up for a pastry or a, a box of pastries for the family? Who's most likely to be picking out the wedding flowers? And uh, so we geared it more, most of our social media presence, our graphic presence is geared 
towards women, maybe of that sort of a Pinterest category, you know, the 25 through 65 or more. Um, they tend to we have more engagements with women at our farmers markets, so we thought we should name name uh, name our farm something that would be appealing to to that demographic. Um, we initially, when we were thinking of having just a goat dairy, our name was Bearded Lady Farm, because of our goats all have beards. We thought that was really clever. Um, then we also saw the potential for that to be a little bit offensive, so we uh, we backed away from that. Um, we finally settled. My grandmother, Ardelia, passed away at the age of 98, and she left us a generous gift, which allowed us to buy a farm. She was a farmer's wife herself. Um, she taught me how to grow flowers. So Ardelia Farm seemed really appropriate. You have that little story. It makes people pause. They really like it. Um, we like it, too, because she's such a giving person that we like having her around us all the time. Um, so that sort of dro that drove um, that target demographic drove our logo and our name. Um, and about that time, we were also starting to sell at farmer's markets because we needed some money. We checked out the cottage industry laws. Thomas could bake in the home kitchen. We could sell at the local farmer's market. Um, so we kind of got started that way. <clears throat> we're fortunate to have a friend who's a very talented graphic designer um, who's willing to work for pork. Or uh, most recently, she and her husband, or now husband, got married, so we were able to trade wedding flowers, wedding cake for her graphic design skills. So she really takes care of us. Um, so once we settled on the name, she came up with these ideas and hundreds of more. Um, I really recommend this. It seems silly, but really focusing on our graphic design. For people who don't see your farm, they may not ever come to your farm. They might not see you at farmer's markets. They really, people like, you really have it together. I'm like, we have $20 in our bank account, but thank you. <laughs> like, they don't have to know the whole truth. Um, so, uh, yeah, having, having a slick uh, graphic presence has really been um, helpful to us. Yeah, so once, yeah. We, once we decided on a, a general layout that we responded well to, then she sent us this with any font we could imagine, and uh, all signs pointed to this one. And now we can't, we can't look at all the others without seeing this one as the one. It, uh, it just made sense to us. And then, oh, just, just touching on what Bailey mentioned, we, um, we love all the animals, and we'll always have some pigs and goats and lots of birds, but... Um, we kind of had an aha moment one day when we realized Bailey knows and loves flowers, the background in horticulture, and I, as a trained pastry chef, we can grow flowers and we can use our own eggs and our own produce for me to bake with. And uh, it took three and a half years of farming until we finally realized, oh, we can take our, our training and our passions and turn it into our farm business. And uh, it just made sense. So we've been rolling with that for a couple of years now. And it was uh, January of 2015 where uh, our lives changed forever. <laughs> <laughs> Alex mentioned that uh, everyone on, uh, on Facebook responds well to cute, quote, cute farm animals doing something funny. And uh, we, we have proof to that. We um, sort of uh, what Taylor was saying, we always have our phones in our pockets and are just taking little photos and videos throughout the day. And... Um, some brief backstory. Uh, last winter, a handful of our chickens decided to overwinter back in their summer coop, uh, not, not quite at the barn. And most mornings, if we uh, were doing chores a little later than they would like, they would come from their coop up to the barn to tell us they were ready for breakfast. And we just had a, a little track from our boots leading from the barn back to their coop that they would walk through. We saw it every day. It didn't mean much to us, but uh, it was cute. And one day, I happened to just take up my phone and get uh, an eight-second video that might play for us here. Of, uh, but it might not. <laughs> it's just eight seconds of them wa walking single file through the snow. You can picture it. There's very little sound. You can maybe hear one of them clucking. That's it. It's poor quality. That's it. But um, in a nutshell, uh, within a couple of days, it had over 100,000 views on Facebook. <laughs> we. That's, yes, that's good. Go oh, yeah, ahead. I think the caption was, uh, there's a big storm that hit the whole East Coast and people were stranded at home, which is kind of a nice time to post something like this. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, slow commute this morning, but one lane southbound is open. 
I'm always a bit of a smart ass and uh, I use that in my captioning usually. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I take this really beautiful thing and I'll kind of put a little edge on it. Mm -hmm. um, but that really worked for people. And uh, yeah. everything we post on Instagram, we link to our, in our Facebook uh, business page. And I guess that's where it really mm -hmm. took off. But we thought, oh, that's really funny. Look, a thousand people like this. Mm -hmm. Oh, 10,000. And I think it was about the about the 100,000 mark on Facebook views where um, I had texted a friend of a friend who works in New York for, for um, Us Weekly magazine, like a celebrity gossip magazine. N nothing, have any, anything to do with our lives, but just a friend. Oh, isn't this funny? We posted a video and it's going viral, as they say. And she, oh, that's funny. And um, that person talked to someone who talked to someone, and they decided to just pick it up and put a little blurb on their website. I think it was basically just, look at this cute little video online, click here, and they uh, reached out for a little interview, a paragraph, and th that was it. And then um, I think it was the next day, uh, someone from an organization called Storyful reached out and just asked for our permission to share it with uh, news outlets. It was non-exclusive. Uh, it wasn't actually a contract just saying, can I have your permission to give it to New York Times, Discovery Channel, ABC, NBC. I guess uh, these news outlets hire organizations to find content for them because everyone's desperate for content all the time. So within a couple of days, we were on ABC World News Tonight and the Weather Channel. Oh, there's a video of Al Roker uh, playing this video, and he's talking about our chickens, making terrible puns about why did the chicken cross the road. And um, it was the, the moments after the video hit the one million views mark, we were reached, by, um, reached out to by two different agencies. I think one is based in LA, one was London based, and they emailed our, our farm business account. It wasn't through Facebook, so it was an, actually a person doing their research and finding us, not some bot on the internet. Basically saying, uh, we want your video, we want you to sign it over to us, and we will try to earn money from it and give you a percentage. And um, we weren't looking to make any profit at all. It was just a silly video. And uh, we were fortunate that these two companies reached out on the same day. We were by no means playing hardball, but we were able to get one of them to, <laughs> to, uh, to agree to uh, sharing with us 70% of anything they earned from the video. We, it, which has, which, yeah, we haven't earned anything, but, um, <laughs> but still, but still. Um, but it was fun, and we, it was a whole new world to us, so we, we reached out to a couple of friends who know more about these things and had them read the contract and basically said, yeah, it's fine. Uh, these companies will post it on YouTube and try to generate ad revenue that way, and um, if they make more than $100 for us, then they'll send us a check. But it's been a year and counting, and still zero, but we're still happy that it's there. And then uh, that was it. It plateaued mid to late January last year at maybe two million views or two and a half. Eight for a long time. And we thought, that was fun. That's great. It's done. But uh, uh, when the big storm came a couple of weeks ago to um, DC, Baltimore, Philly area, it, uh, it, the video came back. And <laughs> I guess to, to speed things up, um, over the course of a couple of weeks, it just exploded. And as of right now, it has well over 10 million views. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and but uh, above all of this, what we've really what we've gained from it not money, but right now our um, our farm Facebook page has over sixteen thousand followers, and our our farm Instagram page has well over four thousand followers. And um, here's Al Roker talking about our chickens. <laughs> <laughs> So it seemed really silly, and it is really silly. It's good to keep that in mind. But there we have almost 20,000 people who have signed up for us to advertise to them. So we kind of let that sink in. We said, oh, yeah, we could probably do something with this. Um, keep in mind on Instagram, Facebook, a lot of this, these likes, they're not really people. They're robots. They're people trying to sell you something. So don't take it. You're not, you know, we never post, oh, we hit 3,000 viewers or 3,000 likes because they're not all people. A lot of them are people, and I've made some really good friends through social media, but you know, it's okay to be happy about that, but I prefer keeping that to ourselves. Um, but what, when it really mattered to us was then uh, we, we hatch and ship baby chicks in the springtime. So 
wow, we have 20,000 people who are pre-selected to like chickens. So that's a great place for us to advertise. A good time for us to uh, maybe pay a little bit extra on Facebook to boost one of those posts in the springtime when we are, you know, when we're shipping and selling chicks. Um, likewise, we have started a mail order bakery, which launched this fall, um, mainly in the holiday season. Um, so these are people are from all over the world, mostly in the U.S., and they can all order, you know, baby chicks, um, baked goods from us that we can ship. And then uh, we do sell some of our pork. We don't raise a whole lot, but that goes mainly to Philadelphia. But all of our Philadelphia friends and contacts follow us on social media. So it's just a really quick and easy platform for us to let people know when they can order. Direct them to our website. It's all based there. They can click. It's uh, really easy. Um, so this time last year, we also realized that uh, we thought we were getting a grant from NRCS to put up our first high tunnel greenhouse. It seemed really certain that that was going to happen. Um, but then it fell through. And I had already started seedlings and ordered stuff, and I was really banking on this. So uh, I said, well, maybe now's the time that we consider uh, a crowdfunding campaign. Because at that point, we had maybe five or 6,000 people um, between Facebook and Instagram. So we put it out there. Um, and in pretty short order raised, I think, over $13,000 to put up a really nice, big, high tunnel greenhouse. Um, people love, people in the city, not everyone, but there's people who want, they think they want to do what we're doing. In reality, they might not want to do it once they see it, but they want to be a part of it. And they, they can comment on your post, really feel a part of what you're doing. Um, they're really happy to give us five, ten, five hundred dollars in some cases. Um, so we were really able to leverage that social media presence into something that helped us a lot. Mm -hmm. but, um, we'll briefly go through sort of opportunities that have, have that we we've gotten solely because of our Instagram presence. Um, uh, Jane Lindholm reached out to us this past summer and said, "Hey, I follow you guys on Instagram. I really like what I see. I'll be in your area. Can I swing by uh, next week and and chat with you?" And um, we didn't realize she was going to be recording for Vermont edition. We thought it was just a visit. She got out of her car and took out her microphone and said, let's go. And we took her on a tour and chatted for maybe an hour. And um, thankfully, they edited it very well and took out all of our ums and ahs and pauses. But that was a great opportunity for us that um, we, we weren't really looking for at all. And other opportunities uh, have, have come our way from this interview. Actually, one of the organizers of this event heard this interview and sent us an email the next day and said, hey, can you come? and talk uh, in January, February. Uh, a couple based in Maine, both one used to live maybe in Portland, the other in New York City, run this website called Urban Exodus, where they travel the country profiling people who used to live in cities and, and fled, either artists or chefs, farmers. And um, she found us through Instagram. They came to our farm last October. We spent the day visiting. They took a lot of really beautiful photos. And just yesterday, the story launched on their website. They have a very strong social media presence. And now we have 80 to 100 beautiful professional shots of our farm and our animals and our home that were free to use. And um, that was a great opportunity. Um, we were reached out to by Free People, sort of this lifestyle brand based in Philadelphia. Our graphic designer works for them. We did the flowers and desserts for her wedding this past summer. People who run the blog saw some of the photos from her wedding and said, we'd like to do a story on the two of you on our blog. And so I think it was maybe last month, they posted a bunch of photos, did an interview, and we've had at least a couple of uh, brides send us emails as a direct result of this story in the past couple of weeks inquiring about wedding cakes and flowers. And uh, next month, you'll see us in Modern Farmer. The, um, the Urban Exodus folks have done some freelance photography for the magazine, and they pitched our story to Modern Farmer, and they um, picked it up. So I guess every issue, they'd have a, a Meet the Modern Farmer page, and that's us next time. And all of this, we didn't seek out at all. They just found us on Instagram and sent us an email. So it's been a really powerful platform for us. Okay, so we use mainly Instagram. We, can link, we do link that to our Facebook and to uh, Twitter on occasion, but we really don't see any, I don't, know, I don't understand Twitter. I, I, I understand a photo. Um, it helps that we have a lot of things to take pictures of. People love flowers, they love cake, they like looking at those things. Um, we also uh, have a lot of baby animals, animals doing funny things. Um, we have decided that even if we're not raising pork commercially, we want to have it for ourselves, 
but there's nothing like a baby pig video to like get 400 likes right away. It's, it's true. Uh, baby goats, maybe even more so. Like a bouncing baby goat is gold. Um, and we like them too. Um, yes, yeah, so we have a, we try to be really honest, um, at least occasionally really honest. We do like to, you know, show the pretty side of things. Nobody wants to look at, you know, everything that's bad on a farm. <laughs> Um, that could be fixed with more money because then you just sound like you're complaining all the time. But uh, we do, on occasion, we like to keep it uh, a little more honest. So yeah, there's cute baby goats sleeping in a tire. That's great. The reality might be that uh, little Fifi found a pile of trash to sleep on. And uh, so, you know, a certain very small percentage, we like to really show some of the reality. We do, we love our lives. It is beautiful. There's great things happening. But it's not always, uh, you know, effortless and beautiful. Um, here's another example. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, you're, we really think about you're telling a story. You're telling your story to people. So think long term. Um, you know, give a little backstory, but uh, keep people updated about what's going on. They really do care, which uh, is kind of shocking when someone comes to the farmers market and they're a little bit, you know, a little starstruck. Like I follow you on Instagram. I'm like okay, great. <laughs> like I, I just can't even talk right now. I'm like. Well, why not? Because, like, so we really try to disarm those situations, but there are people who take this very seriously. Um, and it's, you know, it's honor. We, we're honored by that. Um, I guess to, to sort of go on what um, Alex and Taylor were saying about just take good photos. It really does matter. Um, we, a Google search, just how to take a good Instagram photo, can tell you a lot more information than we could today. But there are just some really simple tricks or apps you can, you can download to take a better photo. Think about lighting. Natural light is great. And, um, and uh, you can take good photos with an iPhone. When we first decided to sort of make this transition to really hit uh, Instagram hard, we reached out to a friend of ours who's a photographer and said, well, we need to buy a fancy camera, so we'd like your, your input on what to get, and um, we want our Instagram to really be great. He said, oh, no, 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 just use your phone. You can do great, great work with your phone. And um, we found that to, to be true. Again, we just have our phones in our pockets all the time. It's very rare that we'll stage a photo. It's just gathering eggs, and there happens to be a sap bucket next to the barn, and the light is nice. Or having family over for dinner made a cheese board, and uh, the light coming into the dining room looks really nice that day. Um, also echoing what Taylor was saying about uh, keeping it simple and having a neutral background, um, Bailey set up in our porch just a couple pieces of Luan that we've stained and uh, rubbed some flour into and uh, it's on just on top of our chest freezer with nice diffused light from uh, our porch and um, that's where he photographs all of his floral arrangements. And on the right is we were just having carnitas for dinner one night and uh, it just looked great and <laughs> it was very well received. Very briefly we'll touch on hashtags and the, uh, the, the other two did as well but um, like hashtags are very commonly misused and we, we tend to be pretty stingy with our hashtags because I think they, they can be distracting. And so um, here's a wedding cake I did this past summer and below is an example of how we would use hashtags. So we'll say a bride is getting married in Vermont and is looking for inspiration for her Vermont wedding or looking for a Vermont based bakery for her cake. They might find us that way and that's great. Or uh, you'll often find, if working some sort of event, probably even today, there's a hashtag for today's event. If you search it, you'll see anyone's photos from uh, this weekend. Uh, so th these days, most, uh, most couples for their wedding have a hashtag. So it's just Ashley and Peter is the example. But next to it is an example of um, how you might commonly see hashtags misused. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, some people, some people really love this. If, if you're just looking for, for likes, if you're just looking for, for followers, then this is a great way to get more traffic. But if we're really looking to generate business, someone uh, in Milwaukee is doing a search for a hashtag yum is not going to, to be a customer of ours. And so we, we want it to just stay clean and, um, and, and pertinent. Um, yeah, we... We have to agree that it is a great way to network um, with real people, too. Some of your followers aren't real, but many are. So this is a, at a flower grower conference. Um, some people already knew of us through our Instagram. I met other people. Now I can follow their Instagrams. 
um, <clears throat> also really a great way to exchange information. You know, if you're having a problem with something, you post it and ask if anyone has an idea, and someone will. It's uh, it's pretty remarkable the uh, the amount of engagement, um, which is is great. We we lived in the city with you know millions of other people, and then all of a sudden we're in Orleans County, Vermont, with no one around, and we haven't felt alone a day at all because we really feel connected with all of these people and new people and people on the other side of the country. Um, mentioned briefly the Florette flower um, farm. We have uh, really through Instagram developed a relationship. Um, she grows beautiful dahlias and was you know, selling some of her dahlia tubers. And, but she had commented on some of our baby chicks and our egg colors. So we've just agreed to do a barter. So we shipped her baby chicks. She sent us dahlia tubers. Um, and that's gone back and forth. And then she posted a picture of beautif our beautiful eggs, um, which drove maybe 20 orders of baby chicks on our website. So be polite, engage with other people. Um, most of them are real. And uh, yeah, it can be a really nice sense of community even across an entire country. Yeah, have a, and have fun too. We, uh, we try to keep it mainly about the farm, about our story, what's going on. Um, don't dilute that with too many uh, selfies of yourself at the gym or too many kitten photos. You know, if you really feel like that's an important part of your story, then, then you know, tell some. But this is our, uh, our little English shepherd, and sometimes he lets us put wigs on him. And <laughs> <clears throat> so just show people that you're real. You have a sense of humor also. Yeah, because I think if you don't enjoy social media or if, you, if it's a burden for you, then that'll show in your posts. We, um, we, a friend of ours with a farm down in New York, she tries to stay active on Facebook and Instagram, but uh, you can tell she doesn't enjoy it, and so all she really does is complain on Facebook. And, um, and we do our best to, to not do that. I think that's so important to enjoy it. Otherwise, you just shouldn't do it. It won't benefit you or your business. Great. Well, thanks. Thank, Thank you. you.